This is 3.1 examples part two. It says find the extrema of f of x equal to two sine x minus cosine of two x on the interval zero to two pi. So we're gonna follow those same directions. Now, um, we can plug in any number positive or negative. The domain of sine is negative infinity to infinity and so is the domain of cosine, including the domain of cosine, excuse me, of two x. So we don't have to worry about omitting any of our critical numbers that we find since the domain of this function is all real numbers. We just have to make sure that the critical numbers we do find are within this interval. So let's go ahead and do part one, which is to find the derivative so that we can get the critical numbers. Two is my constant multiplier and the derivative of sine is cosine minus the derivative of cosine is negative sine and I keep my angle the same. But because my angle is not just an x, I do have to multiply by the derivative of that angle, which would be two. If I clean this up just a little bit, I will get a positive two sine of two x. Now, I do have to set this equal to zero I do not need to find where it's undefined because there is no denominator. So I'm going to end up setting this function equal to zero. And normally the best way to do that is to try to factor um, the equation. So I am gonna use a trigonomic identity here. I know that sine of two x is two sine x cosine x so that now we're all talking about the same angle and then I notice that I can factor out a 2 cosine x from both of those terms so I end up with 1 plus 2 sine x equal to 0 now if I set this factor equal to 0 and this factor equal to 0 I'll get my two solutions So here if I divide by two on both sides, I still get cosine equal to zero. And then if I take a look at my unit circle between zero and two pi, that's the whole entire unit circle one time around. Um, cosine is the x value of the unit circle. So when is the x value equal to zero? That would be here and here. And those angles in two, zero to two pi are pi over two and three pi over four. I'm sorry, three pi over two. You cannot use negative pi over two because negative pi over two would not be in this interval. So those are the only two critical numbers I get from this factor. Now on the other equation, I'm gonna minus one on both sides. And then I'm gonna divide by two on both sides. Okay, sorry about that. I had to go find my um, formula sheet here. So I am gonna have to find out when the sine of x is equal to negative one half. Now I have a unit circle here. So this is the same as on the unit circle saying where the y value equals negative one half. So if I look at my unit circle from zero to two pi, I get a y value of positive one half here and here, which means at these two angles, so when x is equal to pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. Therefore, I have um, these four critical numbers. So for number 2, or part 2 of my directions, I have to evaluate the function at each one of these critical numbers. There are a bunch of them.
So to do that, I am going to program my calculator with my original function. So let's go to my calculator and type in 2 sine of x minus cosine of 2x and hit enter, but I'm going to ignore that value because I don't know what was plugged in for x last. And now I'm going to, these are radians, so real quick I'm going to make sure that I'm in radian mode. Um, and I am in radian mode. So I'm going to quit second mode to quit, and I can go ahead and start plugging in my x values. So pi over 2 stores x, oops, clear, pi over 2 stores x, then highlight my function, hit enter to copy it, hit enter to plug it in, and I get 3. Now 3 pi over 2 stores x, and repeat the same process. So I get negative 1. Finally, pi over 6 stores x, plug it in, I get 1 half, 5 pi over 6 stores x, and I get 1 half. Okay, so we've done part 2. Part 3 says to evaluate the function at the endpoints, which means I need to find f of 0 and f of 2 pi, since those are my endpoints here for the function. So we're going to do the same thing as before, 0 store x and plug it in, I get negative 1, and then 2 pi stores x and plug it in, I get negative 1. So we take the highest y value for our maximum. So of all these y values, the highest is 3. So we have a maximum at pi over 2 for the x value, 3 for the y value. Your minimum, there happens to be 3 that have the same low y value. So your minimum is going to occur at different x values. And if they usually want the lowest to the highest, so the x value here is 0, that one's going to go first. Then the next one is going to be the x value 3 pi over 2. And then finally the highest one would be 2 pi and negative 1. So it's the same minimum y value, it just happens to be at three different locations as far as x is um, concerned.